Come on. Problems? This goddamn thing keeps jamming up. If you're ready to see the other briefings, we can get started. Show me what else you managed to dig up. You got it. Two of the city's finest scumbags. The man himself, Mr. Vito Scaletta. You gotta be shitting me. Last couple months have been pretty tough on old Vito. Sal's always hated him. Thought he was a mole for the commission, but he couldn't do anything about it because Vito's made. After the heist, Sal refused to pay Vito his cut. And then he put the clamps on him. He's been trying to limit Vito's ability to pay what's owed. And if Scaletta can't kick up, the commissioner give Marcano permission to whack him. The only reason that Vito is still above ground is because he has a couple off-the-record businesses. He's been using that money to pay Sal. Gotta give Scaletta credit. Pretty goddamn tenacious. He's lasted a lot longer than I thought he would, but the clock is ticking. A couple weeks ago, Sal sent in his nephew, a kid named Michael Greco, to help Vito run River Row. Greco's been using his guys to limit what Vito can do, where he can go. Once he has Vito completely boxed in, he'll make his move. Scaletta has to know what Greco has planned. I'll pay him a visit. See if I can't leverage this thing with Greco to bring Scaletta around in my way of thinking. I'm sure I'll appreciate your concern. Any word about how it's going in there? How you think? Vito's taking his beating. Wish Greco would just let us kill a poor son of a bitch. Get it over with. Nah, Greco wants to show how tough he... Whoa. Looks like I got here just in time, Vito. Lincoln. How's this possible? I thought you were dead. Bullet was deflected by my skull. Came out the back. Talk about some goddamn luck. Worst place to shoot a fella's in the forehead. The skull's harder than you think. <clears throat> Come on. We need to have a talk. When I heard about what happened, I went to Marcano asking my cut right then and there. I figured if you fucked you and Sammy, I'd be next. Yeah, I'm guessing he didn't go for it. <sighs> Said he wanted to wait for the heat to die down. Didn't want me running around, buying expensive shit, getting noticed. Like I'm some fucking amateur never sat on a big score before. The money I fronted for the robbery was pretty much everything I put away. Didn't have enough to run, so... I stayed. The commission wouldn't let him just kill me, so I figured I'd make that cocksucker jump through every hoop. Make him prove I deserve to get whacked. It wasn't much, but it was something. Heard he brought in his nephew to push you out. A kid named Michael Greco. Nephew by marriage, not blood. Sure didn't number in here. Yeah. They were looking to see what other rackets I was running. I could leave a fucking paper trail in my office. Eh, nah, don't bother with that shit. Look, uh... Appreciate you getting me out of the freezer and all, but, uh... What are you doing here? Marcano deserves to pay for what he did, so I'm going after him. Him, his brothers, his lieutenants, all of them. And I'm gonna need your help. Look, pretty much whittled me down to nothing. I mean, this is it. For now, maybe. But once I take back River Road from Greco, money will start coming in, it'll be a different story. What's your partners now? As long as you do what I say and give me what I want when I want. <laughs> so goodbye, Marcano, hello, Lincoln Clay. It's either that or more of this. And next time, I won't be around to fish your ass out the freezer. Nobody kills that scumbag with me. You bring me Greco. I'm in. Tell me about his rackets. He took over the dock union and he's got a warehouse. He has a lot of valuable shit in there. You take both of them out. Greco's finished. A couple of my guys have been keeping tabs on him. You should talk to them. They'll fill you in. All right. 
Vito said you'd be expecting me. Took you long enough. I'm Jock Blanchard. Vito claims you can unfug this mess and get us working men back on a job. Maybe. Depends if your information's any good. Used to kick up to Vito's men Andy Toretto for union work. But now that Coyon Greco got Andy squeezing everybody for more dues. You don't pay, you don't get a work permit. Poor fucks even gotta use Greco's loudmouth buddies to collect. This Greco sounds like a real piece of shit. <laughs> you don't know the half of it. On top of that, Andy's gotta keep the permits under lock and key. Anything happens to those, oof. Ain't no work happening around here. I'll see what I can get out of Toretto's people. Toretto. He's killing our fucking crew! That come tussle with a motherfucker your own size. Grabbing cover! Fucking pain. Oh, shit! Huh? Holy fuck! Be... Fuck that boy! Look who I found! At that fucking height! Hell yeah! And numb nuts. He just... Got him. Must have run off. Yes, him. You don't have to tell me. just my hearing aid. But you know where that hurts. Oh. <laughs> You got Get shit ready for trouble. Hey, shit. Ah. Fuck him up. Oh. I'll blast the black office. Yeah. Word is Andy Toretto's down at the dock union, demanding to know who's been stopping his people from collecting dues. Think he tipped off Greco to what's been happening? Nah. Knowing Andy, he'd probably see Greco in the ground next to you if he could. But he's a lifer. And if he's got a job to do, he's gonna goddamn well do it. Bad fucking situation all around. And it's about to get worse. Tell the boys they'll be back to work soon, Jock. Hey, suck my hole! He about to get it. He got... Hey. 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 Greco's on his last. You standing with him or me? Fuck you. All right, I'm with you. Vito will be happy to hear that. The dock union's under control. Put some of you guys on it. I'll send them over. And Lincoln, just cause Greco's a dipshit doesn't mean he's a pushover. He'll probably send out some of his men, have him try and take you out. So watch your ass. Get your hands on Greco and rough him up all you want. But don't kill him. That's for me. I was in the third platoon company C of the 614 tank destroyer battalion during World War II. I trained as a medic, but I still carried a gun. Every man in our company was black. The army didn't know what to do with us other than they didn't want us fighting with the white men. Limbaugh. Klimbach was that little French town up there near the border with Germany, and we were ordered to take it. Now, the Krauts took out three of the four anti-tank guns we had, but there was no way in hell we were letting them get the better of us. We were determined to show we was just as good, if not better, than every other soldier in the service. I, I don't like talking about the medals I got over there. Only way a man survives something like that is through the grace of God. Doesn't seem right celebrating a little piece of tin. No one knows I helped Lincoln except for you and John Donovan. Not that I'm keeping it a secret, mind you. 
Just that nobody ever came around and asked about it. Vito sent me. You're Connie, right? Yup. Connie DeMarco. Been keeping an eye on the smuggling business for Vito. Roy Thibodeau's in charge now, and it's a damn shit show. Why hasn't Greco bounced him yet? Oh, he bounced Roy right into a hole if he got to say so. Greco didn't pick Roy, and that puts a target on his back. Still, Roy's trying to sell the usual shit from out of Cuba. Cigars and rum, mostly. Hell, rumor has it they even selling medicine and shit to the Cubans. Sounds like Greco scrambling. <laughs> Imagine Greco thought his uncle Sal would give him a break, but no. So he's squeezing everyone, including Roy. Business gets any worse, Roy's gonna have to come down and see to it himself. Mind, Roy's got a few guys here and there. Might take some persuading, but I'll get him to talk. You all right? Huh? Slow motherfuckers die first! Uh. Oh shit! Fucker! This shop is. Fuck is coming for us! You're gonna tell me about Roy's smuggling operation. The boss is trying to get medical supplies to Cuba for extra cash. I don't know where the shipment is. From now on, my crew is your crew. Get away! Get away! Run! Run away! Anybody follow you? Roy is rattled. Scared of Greco. Terrified of you. <laughs> Heard he started sleeping at the warehouse, the only place he feels safe. Good. Means I have an easier time getting my hands on him. Once he's taken care of, we'll move in. Vito will turn things around. You'll see. It's for fellas like us. Battlefield Should promotions come a lot. Must have run off. make things good again for you, Roy. Join my crew. Great. That sounds great. Whatever you say. See? Things are already looking up. Need you guys to secure the smuggling operation at the warehouse. Nice work. Those Fanooks never should have fucked with me. I'll send some of my crew. You take the Dark Union back, and that fuck Greco will be done. Today, I'm sure the file on Vito Scaletta is about three feet thick, but that wasn't always the case. Hoover didn't even acknowledge the Mafia existed until 1957, so we weren't really keeping tabs on guys like Vittorio Scaletta till after that. Now, we know he served in World War II and did a six-year stint in prison for theft and illegal distribution of federal rations. It's, uh... It's generally believed he was a made member of the Falcone family in Empire Bay, though he's also a suspect in the death of Don Carlo Falcone. Now, if he did kill the Don, Vito must have had friends in high places because he was allowed to live. He was exiled, though, and forced to relocate down here, and the commission convinced Sal Marcano to make Vito a lieutenant and give him some rackets. Greco's in that building at the end of the block. A lot of whoas in there. Probably face down a pussy right now. You got any muscle with him? Yeah, a couple of meatheads. I'll go around the front, you take the back. If he tries to run, grab his ass. Nobody kills that prick but me. Fuck. Those are Marcano's guys. God, suck. Right, come on, back to the car, you drive. I'll cover us. Fuck if that little prick gets away. God damn it! The fuck are you? Let's get him the fuck out of here. The cops are closing in. Hey, get the door. Yeah. Come on. What? What happened? You crossed the wrong motherfucker. That's what happened. Now shut the fuck up. You don't know who you're messing with, you baby fucking sons of bitches. Assholes. You're so impossibly fucked right now. Should've known you'd be involved in this, Vito, you cocksucker! Settle down back there, kiddo. Ride will be over soon. 
You chicken shit motherfuckers, let me go already! Back to your place. Yeah. Pull around to the chum shack in the back. And as for you, have a little dignity. Christ. Help! Somebody fucking help! Help! Watch out for cops. Don't want to get pulled over with this asshole in the back seat. Whew, shit. <laughs> for a couple of years there, I really thought I might be done with all the Jimmy Cagney bullshit. But here I am. Funny. I kind of figured you for more the Edward G. Robinson type. <laughs> Look at you, kid. You know, God's got a sense of humor, too. It's sick as shit, but that motherfucker's got one. <laughs> oh, oh, please! I didn't do nothing! Didn't do nothing? You were getting ready to fucking kill me! I was just doing what Uncle Sal told me to do! Nah, that fuck never liked me, I get it. But this? You never tried anything like this before. I don't... Come on, Mikey. Why do you want me gone all of a sudden? He said you were a carpetbag. Never should have been down here in the first place. <laughs> you want me to keep going? You got nine more! Fuck! Listen, Jesus! He was worried to know about the casino! He said we're gonna play up to Leo and the commission! What casino? Answer the question. Uncle Sal, he's... You, you, you see that construction across the lake? He's building a casino over there. He wants to go legit. Turn this city into Las Vegas. Gambling's illegal. Uh, yeah, no shit, it's illegal. Uh, which is why he's paid a bunch of money to get the laws changed. Who else is involved in this? I don't know. Uh, I don't know, I swear it. <laughs> I told you what you wanted to know. You're gonna let me go now, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Stupid fucking prick. I'll clean this mess up. No reason for you to stick around. Remember our deal. I'm expecting a cut of everything you bring in. Hey, I know how this shit works. You'll get your money. There's a woman named Alma, helps me out sometimes. Cuban, mean as fuck. She talked to us, see if she needs anything. Might be an easy way to bring in some extra money. Where's she at? At the warehouse. All right. What are you gonna do with him? Fish gotta eat like everyone else. At what point did you become aware that Sal Marcano wanted to build a casino north of the city? Pretty early on. Michael Greco told Lincoln about it. And Lincoln Clay's plan was to specifically target various entities related to Marcano's casino plan? Between the bribes he was paying out to get gambling legalized and the money needed to pay off the commission, Sal was stretched pretty thin. So Lincoln used that to his advantage. Forced Sal into making some extremely hard decisions. Decisions that would limit his options. I'm telling you, we make twice as much bread moving heroin as we would from a stupid fucking casino. Maybe three times. This ain't about the money. <laughs> You're joking, right? All I ever heard from you is, don't give me that goddamn excuses, you understand? You pay me what's fucking old! You think this is a game, <laughs> son? And it's my fault for playing along with you. We're not setting you straight. But it's not a game. This shit wears on you, grinds you down. I ain't had a decent night's sleep in 43 years. And then after Lucho, shit. Well, hey, we got the cocksuckers who did that. Every last one of them. Yeah, and your uncle's still dead, ain't he? Yeah. You think sitting in that chair makes you special, huh? Somehow puts you above all the bullshit. Well, it's the opposite. All it does is paint a giant goddamn bullseye on your forehead. There's a price to be paid for all this, you understand? And I'm tired of paying it. Mainly, I'm worried I'm going to get a phone call telling me you're dead in a gutter somewhere. What do you expect me to do, huh? Work the front door? Glad hand folks as they come on in, maybe give them a quick slap on the ass? You run it with me. And here, after a few years, after I know everything's settled down, you'll take over. 
Find yourself a nice woman. Give me some fucking grandkids. Sound boring as fuck. It's the only way, son. The world is changing. Used to be people knew their place. Now everybody's screaming about equality. And now they all deserve a slice of the pie. Niggas, mix, gooks, you name it. Our way of doing things won't work in a world like that. Yeah. You come to me with something like this, Lou, you better be goddamn sure. Yeah. Lincoln Clay is still alive. Fuck me. Oh, yes. Point for Dunn's favorite son, Thomas Burke. How's he doing since Danny? <laughs> Nine weeks ago, Burke stumbles into Rome in the Butcher Barbieri's deli, drunk off his ass, waving a gun around. He fires off ten rounds, but the only thing he manages to hit is a fucking ham hock in the goddamn deli case. The Butcher's boys slap the shit out of him and toss him in a dumpster. Barbieri is the one who took over Point for Dunn, right? Busted up Burke's leg with a tire iron. That's why Burke was willing to go along with the robbery. He thought it'd make things square with Sal, and he'd be able to get Point for Dunn back. He always struck me as an asshole. Yeah, just like every other Irishman. But he hates Marcano as much as you do. Yeah, all right. Least I can do is give Danny's old man a chance for a little payback. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> He's been spending his time in a dive bar up in Point for Dunn. Duffy's, it's called. Shouldn't be too hard to find. Yo, you better be worth all this trouble. Can't believe what I'm reading, what I'm hearing on the radio. What you doing? You knew how it was gonna go down. I sat right there and told you. Maybe I'm just realizing there's a difference between hearing about something in the abstract and seeing it splash across the front page in the newspaper. You didn't think I'd go through with it? I... I don't... No, I knew. I knew as soon as you regained consciousness, I could see it. I, I look at you, I see who you were. A little boy who didn't have much, but who also wasn't angry about it. A little boy who shared, who laughed, who, who just enjoyed being. I wonder what happened to him. He finally realized how things work. <laughs> Is that so? How many times was the orphanage vandalized by rednecks? How many times did we have to drive around asking restaurants for their leftovers because we didn't have nothing else to eat? Did we have to deal with racist assholes? Sure. But whenever they did something, folks come around and help us. White, black, Baptist, Lutheran, you name it. You know how all you boys got new jackets on Christmas? Those came from an old white woman, a Calvinist. She spent the entire year making them. If all you ever look for is evil, it's all you ever gonna see. I gotta go. Uh, Bert. Been a while. Lincoln Clay. Jesus Christ on the cross. Now I've seen everything. I heard you were dead. Been hearing that a lot. What the fuck do you want? Came here to make you a business proposition. Is that so? I'm going after Marcano, his brothers, anyone else that's associated with him. They want my help. The way I see it, once we deal with Barbieri, you get Point the Dunn back. After that, we can discuss what happens to the rest of the city. <laughs> no, fuck off. That bullet, chalky posture, what's already? Look where that got me. From where I'm standing, I'm not seeing much of a difference between then and now. You listen that, you listen to God, you fuck. <laughs> Danny was so buttoned up. The coroner wouldn't let me get a last look at him. Anyone's killing that fucking Marcano. That's me. Unless Marcano's hanging around one of these dive bars, I don't think he has too much to worry about. Yeah, go fuck yourself. There's no more stones in the likes of you that are a fucking off. A fucking ingrate. Coming to your question, me. You and your kind. Yeah, caught Denra. The first sign of trouble. 
You always have. You always will. You and me are going for a little ride. What the crazy you think you're doing? You were bragging about your stones, so I figured we'd take a little ride. See who cracks first, the Chalky or the Mick. I like the cocks already. I got drinking to do. Pull over here. Nah, get the fuck out of my ride. Stop by me shop. We can talk business oh, there. My fault. <laughs> Back so soon, then? Tell me about Barbieri. Barbieri? Well, he's a right fucking cunt. I can tell you that much. You know what I'm asking, Burke. Give me something I can use. Barbieri's running Splow out of the Sweetwater Distillery. Splow. Panther's piss. White Mule, Alley Gin, Pochain, Moonshine, you ignorant fuck. Christ, what kind of booze you people drink over there in Darkyville? Kind is not called Painter's Piss. <laughs> Boy, you ain't lived. Set the whole thing up myself. And that gunny fuck comes in and takes it from me. Smashes me knee all to hell. Barbara here, he's gonna suffer. You hear? Days. Slow. What else has he got besides the distillery? I runs that old Robert O. Slaughterhouse. He's doing more in there than cutting a lean ribe. Drags in there. That's the end of you. I'll do the heavy lifting on this, Burke. Uh -huh. but once Barbieri's dead, I'm counting on you to step up. Oh, I'll do more than step up. And that'll be running this whole damn town or Barnum to the ground. But honest, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference to me either way. <laughs> and yes, you know it once again. A nation once again. And Ireland long, a province be a nation once again. Surprised to see you, Nikki. I know what you're planning on doing. And I couldn't just sit here and watch my old man send you out half-cocked. Fuck. Man, your dad's never been much for details. Yeah, what he didn't tell you is that the man running the Sweetwater Distillery is named Carl Bevers. Hard ass Country asshole. His family runs the shine through the business, sells it to local shops. Bevers ever let on to where he keeps his stills? Uh, he's got brains enough to move things around. Rumor is he's got a map hid somewhere for his drivers. Hmm. <laughs> Something like that could come in handy. Maybe I'll convince one of his men to tell me where it is. Hey, we've got another man. Goes by the name of Bear. Keeping an eye on the meatpacking plant. You should go see him. I'll do that. Thanks for the help. Anytime, Lincoln. Yeah. Seen him? Hands on the dashboard, motherfucker. Wait, wait, what the hell are you doing? You're gonna tell me everything about Bevis' business. I can't tell you shit if I'm fucking dead. Christ, my folks dropped me on my head. I don't remember shit. Talk to me, asshole. You drive like a fucking asshole. Who's all the cash we bring in from selling hooch? I know where it's being stashed. I see you again. It's your ass. Fucking ah! man. Didn't oh, think he had no! Oh. Out and his whole goddamn crew. She married that little redhead. Trouble's coming. Just keep it up. Is that a good? Nothing over here, fellas. You got Carl's attention. He's back at the Sweetwater Distillery. Any idea how he'll react when I go in there? He's bug shit crazy swamp people. How do you think he'll react? Still, might be worth keeping him around. No one knows the bayou like he does. Oh, you one for this, Nikki? Damn rat you do. Bev Wait a second. Is that a gun? Huh? Huh? Get I'm coming in and the butcher's going out. What about you? Oh, God damn it! All right, all right. I'm in. 
Irish will be in touch. Emptied out the distillery. It's primed and ready for your boys. Over still standard. My boys are on the way. Snatch that slaughterhouse from him, and that fuck Barbieri will have to react. Uh, Thomas Burke he came to the States as a boy uh, when his father fled Ireland, likely because of his involvement in the Irish Civil War. Um, after his father died of a heart attack, uh, Burke started running booze to support himself. I mean, he turned bootlegging into an entire industry, and Sal Marcano took notice. Uh, Burke worked his way up the ranks, but could never be made because he wasn't Italian. We shoot him. Didn't you hear? We're about to find ourselves in the middle of a race war. I've seen you shoot. I think I'll be I. <laughs> hey, with this fucking rifle, I'm Wild Bill Hickok. So, how's the Padre handling all this? You know, the bloody path of mayhem and revenge you've embarked upon? Still not happy about it. Thinks you're almost likely the devil. <laughs> you know, I had a look at his service record. Oh, settle down. I was just curious. He was a medic. But he saw action at Klimbaugh with a 614th. He was credited with taking out two crowd tanks on top of the 16 men he shot. A lot of killing for a would-be priest. That was different. It was during a war. And this isn't? Look, I'm just saying, we didn't win that war by worrying about hurting someone's feelings. We won it by bombing the crowds and nips back to the Stone Age. Padre'd be wise to remember that. Yeah, maybe. I'll catch you later. You bear? Nikki sent me. Oh, I'm gonna marry that girl someday. Bear Donnelly. I own Nikki's da. Everything. He has me keeping an eye on the Robert O. Meatpacking plant. Who's running things over there? Nut job by the name of Sonny Blue. Let's a room out to the butcher's loan sharks. Protection guys, too. If they can't do it there, they put their hurt to people in the street. Any chance Sonny's around the Robodo? Fuck no. Sonny only comes around to scare his people in the shape. But I'm hearing one of his boys, a fella named Ralph, got caught skimming. They're working the bloody bastard over in the slaughterhouse to find out where he's got it stashed. Might be beneficial to pull his arse out of the fire. I'll see what I can get out of Sonny's goons. Watch your ass, Bear. Oh, what do you want? Oh, Time for negotiating his dungeon. He's, he's, he's all yours, boys. Oh. I'll get the boys down here. I want to hear about Sunny Blue and the meatpacking plant. All the shops paying protection up to the boss. I know where they are. Nighty night, bitch. We feeling good? This is nobody's fault huh? but yours. Ooh, this boy's dead. Get out of here. Don't look back. Just get to the phone. Just like hunting swamp rats. Get out of here. Uh, 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 clear out. Hurry. Uh, I'm uh, that piece of shit. Save it. Save everyone. Everybody get. Suspect confirmed armed what and dangerous. Abandon search Press and return to patrol. <laughs> Your time is up, motherfucker! Fucking hell! Don't look back. Just get the phone. Just you and me now! Who the fuck are you? I'm the one saving you, thieving ass. Let's go. Looks like <laughs> this ain't fun for you. Usually. Oh, I, got I think he's got force. The first time oh, we got was a great whiskey joint rat. Sonny's back over at the Robert O. His language has taken an especially colorful turn of late. I take it the butcher didn't appreciate Sonny's loan shark and protection rackets being disrupted. You got that right. And the Shinola's hit the fan. Sonny's set on getting things back to normal. You know, keeping his people more scared of him than you. We'll see about that.
Keep your head down till this is over, here. Who in their right mind would have the balls to fuck with Sunny Blue? I'm still tr huh? King of New Bordeaux if you work for me. How's that sound, Sonny? Sure. I kind of like working here anyway. Good. Burke's boys are gonna reach out. Slaughterhouse is clear. Send your people. Hey, don't worry about the bodies. My boys will know what to do about them. Everything's in place. The butcher's on his way. Time to put that rabbit dog down. How did Lincoln Clay convince Thomas Burke, Vito Scaletta, and the woman known as Cassandra to work together? He called a sit-down. He told them to meet him at an old plantation house in the bayou. When he had them all in the same room, he laid out how they were going to take down Marcano. Lincoln could be very persuasive. What's this all about? Getting ready for some company. Barbieri should be here any minute now. Barbieri's coming here. So he claims, never known a man to be a liar. I <laughs> just got off the phone with him. I told him if he wanted to settle up, he'd be here waiting. For fuck's sake, Burke, you don't ever tell your enemy when and where you're gonna set up ah, the Ah, Christ, you're much too serious about all this. It takes the fun out of it. Besides, that's the worst that could happen. You could get us all killed. Aye, that I could. It's all right. It's just Nicky. Butcher and his boys are right behind me. You sure? If there's one benefit to being your miserable daughter, it's I know what a posse of Dago assholes out for blood looks like. I'll call them out with a spotlight on the water tower. I loaded up some barrels with a special petrol mixer cooked up. I scatter them across the yard. A bullet will take them out. So don't be close to them when they blow. I'm gonna snipe those guinea fucks from the crane. You should head up to the roof. One last thing. You try to cut and run the plant myself. We clear? I'll see you when this is done. You might. You all right back there, lass? What's that? My da asking how I'm doing? Whatever have I done to warrant such fucking concern? Ah, oh, shite girl. A simple yes or no would have been fine. Coming down the left lane. Fucks about Burke's little pet nigglet. I want the mick alive. Got it? I'm gonna give him an ass fucking. He's never gonna fucking forget. Bring him back fucking alive, that cocksucker. He's that fucking eat too many of us left. 
I'm s Should have saved a bullet or two. A nigger and a mech working together. Fuck me. I never thought I'd live to see the day. What can I say? Brave new world. Shall I leave then? I see the legs still giving you fits, huh, fucko? Ah, oh, fuck you. You won't be so cocky once I take the acetylene to you. Fuck you! What do you think happens next, huh? You're gonna die, motherfucker. You're gonna hold next to me. You, your whole organization. You're gonna suck my dick in hell. You all right? Grab his legs. Time to get him into the garage. Fat cunt. We were never able to reconstruct precisely what happened to Barbieri, primarily because his body wasn't found until the mid-1980s. The Army Corps of Engineers was dredging the bottom of the Mississippi River, and his remains were found in the trunk of an old car. Both legs were broken so many times there was barely any bone left. They'll not leave thee, thy hill on one. To pine on the stem. Since the lonely are sleeping, go sleep there with him. You already finished with Barbieri. Barbieri? No. By a long shot. Already told you. Day slow. As for you. Show up like Lazarus himself. Name thing in a May self. This chalky bastard is either one of the luckiest sons of bitches that's ever lived, or the kind of man that invades rotten, damn luck. So goddamn sure it was the latter. I have to admit, I was wrong about you. You can thank me by calling me by my name. Die. Lincoln it is, then. It was funny. Things get taken from us. We convince ourselves we go out and inflict the pain on someone else. A little man what's busted up inside eight of us. But it does, it does. No. It done. Spent my entire goddamn life scratching and clawing at anyone who came along. Even if they were there to help. <laughs> Look where it fucking got me. It's the sense. And change it. <sighs> Only way is forward. Now that Irish Point is back under your control, I'm gonna need you to bring in as much money as you can. Uh, Going after Marcano ain't gonna be cheap. Uh, I imagine you'll be wanting your cotton the proceeds. That's right. I can't say I'm a fan of someone looming over me. But a deal's a deal. I asked Nikki to manage those moonshine runs, but she can't bring them all on her own. That liquor hauls in a fair amount. We'll talk to her. She's around here somewhere if she ain't out quail hunting. Quail ain't in season. Oh, for her kind, it's always in season. Now. <sighs> <sighs> Thank you.
Excuse me. Oh, I've got to see Mr. Barbieri. He's probably getting a little lonely. <laughs> lonely. Uh.